<clears throat> Say hi. Okay, I'm trying to, I'm like on vacation right now. So I'm doing this webinar. I'm trying to figure everything out. Not my usual situation. Y'all can see there's no flip chart here. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of like trying to figure it all out. Okay, hang on just one second. Um, make sure you chat and introduce yourself. It's a small group. This is like a brand new Zoom. So um, let's see, hang on. Uh, my daughter is in the other room right here with my husband, so you might hear them. They're doing, uh, I think, Legos or something like this right now, um, building, whatever. I heard them talking about spaceships, so that's kind of what they're doing. We're in Austin, Texas right now. That's where we're at. So we drove last week on Friday. We drove from Atlanta to Austin. And um, the purpose of this trip is actually to find land to build a, a storage facility um, or to buy a storage facility. We're particularly looking at boat and RV storage. So I talked about this a little bit last week, but um, so I'm actually from Austin. I'm originally from Austin and um, my family's here. So I got to spend Father's Day with my dad, which is really nice. And, um, but so we're going to probably I don't know if we're going to retire here, but this would be one of the areas that we have a place to retire. Um, and um, so we're always we're looking for land to buy and you know, so we can be, be next to the family because all my families and I'm originally from Texas. And um, so we're here. It's what we're, we're staying. Does anybody know the Austin area? Just if any y'all knew, let me know. But like the Austin area, right in north of Austin, there's a, a lake called Lake Travis. And it's kind of like a like a snake. It's kind of like just like very wavy or that. So we're staying in like one of the little humps. And we're going to essentially, our goal over the next two weeks is to drive the entire lake and look at every single storage facility that we can that's online. And then also find all the storage facilities that are not online and contact and talk to them as well too. That is for, um, for regular storage, self-storage. And then also boat and RV storage as well. So that's our goal on top of like hanging out. I graduated from high school here. So like all my high school friends are here. Graduated from college here. And so like all my college friends are here. So we're going to just hang out with all my college friends, high school friends, and just catch up with everybody, see all my family. And then on top of that, go out and buy like, but you know, not either buy land or find land to buy or and build or boat and RV storage. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and we're trying to plan our route out, right? So let me just show y'all how I'm kind of planning that out. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let me know if you guys can see. So y'all should be able to see the webinar. And let's just go to Google Maps. Now, uh, like, is Austin a good place to buy storage? No. All right, Austin is one of the cities that's oversaturated with storage facilities. Okay, just like FYI, there's a lot of cities in the areas. People say, are there areas that are oversaturated? Yes, Austin is one of them. So do you want to be buying and sell storage in Austin? If you don't know what you're doing, you definitely don't want to be buying in this area. So this is the Austin area. And I'm just going to walk you all through really fast kind of how <clears throat> I'm planning my route out, right? And how I'm kind of looking at things too. Now, so to give you an idea of what you can be doing, right? And um, as you can see here, so we, we are really, and the reason why we're looking in the boat and RV storage is uh, number one, I have a lender um, that uh, is like adamant about buying, about building boat and RV. I mean, um, and they, li they live in the Austin area so as well too. So they're like, no, I want to do boat and RV. Let's partner and do boat and RV together. And, you know, and I'm like, okay, let's just, I'll get out there and start looking. So essentially we grew up kind of in the Pflugerville, uh, Round Rock, Pflugerville area. And I'd kind of, this area, this area is like booming. It is just crazy right now. Okay. So you see where the lakeway is? This is like the Travis Lake right here. Okay. And, um, but there's like, you know, there's a lot of good lakes. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of drive this area and all the way around this area, all the way around to all these different areas, try to get in there. Because, like, you have to get all up in there, right? It's so funny. Like, 
we're staying kind of like, I think we're staying over in this area right here, or I can't remember, or maybe we're in this area. But um, like their storage up in this area and they're not on Google Maps. And I was like, because I've been searching it, you know, if you search storage, let's see, storage, you know, uh, here in this area. All right, so you just have to plug it in and just start looking so this is like all the facility look there's like hard there's like no storage up in this area i need to i need to zoom in and see what happens but essentially like we're going to be focusing really on this area kind of like right in here and this is really kind of you know if you know this area it's it's it was at one point considered the country but now like austin's getting so big that it's going out so anyways this is storage I just searched storage on Google Maps and just looked this up. And um, if y'all can't, if y'all have any questions, just put it in the chat and I'll see if I can figure out how to do that because I'm sharing only one screen right now. It's kind of hard with Zoom this way. But essentially, there's only one, uh, there's one facility. It's a big, massive facility right here, right? So some guy went out here and bought some land. This is the only storage that's on Google Maps. And there's got to be way more storage facilities here. And so we're up and we're over here in this area. So I saw this, this one right here. I saw, this is like just boat and RV store. Like a guy has a land and he just like fenced it in and everybody parks their boats here. My question is what can I find all up in these areas? You have to, so I'm gonna have to drive up in here and look to see like what is in this area now. So I'm gonna be driving all these like roads in here and just seeing what's in there. I'm not staying on the main roads. I'm getting off the main roads and I'm gonna be driving up in this area looking for storage. And I know there are storage facilities there because I've already driven like all the way through here and I found so many storage facilities that are on and off uh, uh, Google Maps. And so essentially my point is, is that like I'm here, my, my sole purpose to be here is to find land or storage to buy. And I don't know if I'm going to buy regular storage or boat and RV storage, or I'm going to build and do something myself. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know the market. I'm not in here. I'm in Georgia. That's where I'm at. We actually have one storage facility under contract right now that is in Florida. So we, we may be looking into Florida and getting into Florida. But essentially, um, like we just, we don't know anything about this area. So like it's, you don't have to know anything about your market, but you do have to get out there and look at it, right? You're going to take some time to look at it, right? So we are like, you know, as I said, we're, our goal is to, to build storage in, um, in Texas, right? And uh, so we're trying to figure out where where we're gonna do that. And so this trip, we're focusing on the North Texas area out by the water. And we're gonna go from here to Marble Falls and we're just gonna drive up around and around and just every nook and cranny and just see like if there's any good spaces. Land in this area is super expensive, right? Land is really expensive. Um, so uh, we're going to just try to figure out what we're doing. And so my, uh, my suggestion to you guys, you guys let me know if you know exactly what you're going to be doing. But um, if you don't know what you're going to be doing, then you just got to take some time to educate yourself. And so I have an acquisitions person. His name is Chris. And his job is to find storage for us in Georgia to buy. And uh, essentially, he drives around. And I told him, your job is to know where all 700 storage facilities are in Georgia and to talk to every single one of the owners, right? Now, he's in Georgia, right? So guess what? We're getting out of Georgia and going to Texas now. And so my, that's my job. I'm going to have to get out and start looking to see what is out there and really familiarize myself with the areas that I think might be good, right? And then I'm going to just drive around and I'm going to start talking to owners, to storage facility owners. And um, you just got to get over, you just got to get over the idea that, um, you know, like you're just scared. Like, I don't know what to do or where to do or get started. Cause I just had a coaching. I had like a coaching call. I do all my coaching calls on Monday afternoon. And I just had a coaching call with like a new student that just joined like last week or whatever to this, to storage nerds. And he was just like freaking out. He's like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, if you don't know what to do, you should just get out and start driving and start looking at the areas that you're interested in. I mean, you, nobody knows what to do. You don't know what to do until you actually get out there and just look. 
right? So there's only four of us on the uh, the webinar today. And the reason why is because it's a brand new link and I did not market it very well because I'm on vacation. So whatever. So it's just us four. So if you have any questions, it's just us. So I can always unmute you if you want to, inter if you're interested in joining the conversation, asking me questions, I'll just unmute you. You can talk to me. So this will be like a private coaching session, okay? Tell me where you guys are at and tell me what location you're at. And just, inter if y'all are interested, raise your hand. You can introduce yourself to me and then I could just really help you guys to get started, okay? Um, if you're interested in coming on and just talking to me, just put your hand, raise your hand, all right? And then I'll unmute you. You can introduce yourself and I'll help you figure out how to get started in this, okay? This is a very, this is a special session because no, nobody, you know, I've never do this because it's, there's always like, you know, 20, 30, 40 people on the call or something, so. But if you're interested, okay, good. Okay, Sean uh, says he's from San Mateo, California. San Mateo, where's that? Is that like north, south, east, or west of California? And then uh, Nathan says he's in Nashville. Um, and then, okay, oh, San Francisco. Brian says he's in, De in Denver, Colorado. Okay, good. Okay, so we've got Nashville, Colorado, San, San Francisco area, so Northern California. And then who did, who did not say anything? David, he didn't say anything. So David, introduce yourself. Okay, so let's just go down. Brian says he's in Denver, Colorado. So Denver, of course, is just like Austin. It's like the, one of the fastest growing areas in the country. And, and actually, Denver is not a good area to buy right now because everything's just too expensive. All right, so you're going to have to look outside Denver. And, and when I say Denver, I say primary or sec. I say primary market Denver. Maybe secondary market of Denver is too expensive for you. Okay. But so primary essentially is like, you know, the set the Denver area and then secondary is like the suburbs and then outside of Denver would be like tertiary markets, right? So the country. All right. Yeah, exactly. So tertiary is good. So you need to be, look, Denver, not a big state. Get out there, start driving. All right. It's not a big state at all. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I know you think it's a big state. It's like four hours, five hours or whatever. That's not a big state. We, I drive, we drive up and down Georgia all the time. We drive all over Georgia. And actually our facilities are, are at least three to six hours away from us. So like if we ever had to go out, like my husband's like has to go, sometimes he'll drive down and stay a night somewhere and stuff, you know? Well, luckily we have Chris now. So Chris kind of manages all that. But back in the day we had to drive around. So but um, you need to be in the tertiary markets. I saw, um, I think, who was it? I can't remember. Uh, who's in California? It was Sean. Okay, Sean, you're in California. Look, you ain't in a good area either. And Nashville also ain't good. Y'all are all in primary markets. Y'all are all in primary markets. Fredericksburg is also primary market. Y'all are all in primary markets. Okay, so y'all need to get out of the primary markets. And most likely secondary markets are going to be too expensive for you as well, too. So y'all have to get out into the country. So you're going to drive out an, at least an hour, if not two hours away from where you live and focus on um, finding those properties. And you saw, I just showed you with Austin where I'm at and focusing. All right, so... If we look at Austin right here, like here's the Austin. So if you zoom out, let's just zoom out to where I'm looking. You see how the Austin market is right here, right? Austin market is right here. So we're over here. And this is actually, this is like, as you can see, right? And you can just kind of see how it looks like it's like Austin is booming so much that Pflugerville around like when I lived in Pflugerville, I grew up in Pflugerville Round Rock area. There was nobody out there like our town had like 3000 people in it. And now it's like so big. It's like huge. Right. And, and Georgetown was like way out in the country. Like people were like you want to Georgetown? That's like way too far. Right. And now George, Georgetown is like the, one of the fastest growing areas. Right. So, uh, and Leander, like, nobody wanted to go Leander. It's like way too far. Now it's all considered just part of, a, of Austin, right? So you've got to get out here. So in this area here, it's Austin is moving out, as you can see, like, so it kind of stops right here, right? This area, as you can see, like, anybody that's on Georgia MLS is all kind of like in this area. But there ain't nobody here. But guess what? This is not very far. Look, I live in Austin. I mean, I live in Atlanta. All right. Anywhere in Atlanta is at least an hour. Like it just takes forever to get anywhere in Atlanta. People in Austin always complain about all their traffic and they're like, oh, it took me like 30 minutes to get somewhere. I'm like 30 minutes. It takes us an, at least an hour to get anywhere in Georgia. You know, um, so for us to like 
you know, to be out in this area, you know, it's not a big deal for us to even just live. Like if we decided to live, we'd be like living out in this area. Marble Falls, I remember back in the day when I was growing up in Marble Falls, it was like country, you know. Now Marble Falls and Austin are going to eventually be connected and they're going to be together. So, you know, as I'm saying, like you have to, when you look at the mark, when you look at it, you know, just Google your area and just Google storage and see kind of where everybody is and then start look you can tell where the tertiary market begins because guess what there's hardly any storage facilities coming up in this area right there's like one over here like there's some over in this area now remember what i told you guys if y'all are coming on every week i'm not sure is that when you see this many storage facilities on google maps i can guarantee you that many storage facilities are not on google maps whatever you see on google maps the same amount of facilities are not on google maps those are called the hidden market that's that's the hidden market okay and so what I what I'm going to do now is like, yeah, I'm going to go over and check all these out and just see what's out there and see the competition and stuff, you know, and see what's out there. But most likely, if we do anything, it's going to be like, you know, kind of in this area. Right. We're going to do something in this area. And then also another thing is that um, I'm going to go out over here to like Buchanan, like Buchanan in this area and then like the Horseshoe Bay and stuff as well. We want to check this out too. This is a, this is a very, very popular area for like, you know, fishing and stuff like that. You know, there's a lot of boat and there's a lot of boat and RV storage out here. You know, people come out and there's RV parks and stuff. So we're going to drive around over here as well too and just check everything out. But I just wanted you to say like Google your area right now. Just Google it while y'all listening to me and see where the tertiary market starts. See if you can tell where that tertiary market starts. And that there's a lot of storage facilities coming up on Google Maps, that is not a tertiary market. So you gotta just keep going further out and further out so you find very few, okay? And uh, I saw a thing. So tertiary still has some potential. Yes. Are you using population as a filter? Yeah. I do not use a population. Like you can't use population on Google Maps. But yes, you do want to look at population. Okay. So let me just show you something real fast while we're here on Google Maps. I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to give y'all a secret. Y'all are the only ones that get to see this except for my students, right? So don't tell anybody I showed you this. But because I would never show this to anybody like in a big webinar or anything, because, you know, I don't want the whole world to know. But I'll tell you, all because y'all here, y'all actually show it up. So y'all show y'all show some promise here. So this is the spreadsheet that we internally use um, right inside inside our company and inside my company. And I share this with my students so they can get an idea. But essentially what we do is we Google. All right, the population of the cities, all cities in the state that we want to be in. So this is uh, this is Georgia, as you can see. You Google it, right? So if I went in and just Googled like population of Texas cities, because I'm in Texas now, right? We would start a whole nother sheet. We'll start a whole nother sheet, right? Okay, and then you can see, right? There's some big ass cities in Texas, man. Look at this. And I just copy these, right? I'll just copy this, right? And I would just go down and I would paste it in my new spreadsheet. There's a lot of cities in Texas, my God, holy moly. It's like never ending this, these things. I got a lot of cities, cities to go to. Could you imagine there is not this many cities in Georgia at all. I guess Texas is like super big. Look, okay, the smallest city in Georgia is Fernando. It's got four people in it. Okay, I'll just copy this. I'll go to my spreadsheet. You see, am I here? Am I here? Yeah. Add a new spreadsheet. And then I would just paste this. And so now I got this. See, bing, bing, boom, right? So now I can just keep track of all these populations. And then I know, like, I personally need to be in tertiary markets. So you obviously know. I like to stay in around, like, what's a tertiary market in your area? Is 30,000 people a tertiary market? So you start looking and say, like, what is it considered a tertiary market? Like, is Nacogdoches, is Nacogdoches considered, you know, 33? Is that considered a secondary or a tertiary market? 
right? Valdosta, we bought a facility in Valdosta, Georgia. It's got 56,000 people. It's considered, I would consider a tertiary, maybe secondary to tertiary is what I would consider that. You know, there's no big major storage facilities there. There's no st major storage facilities there. And so I would consider a tertiary, but there is a couple of like kind of bigger ones there, but just like one-offs, you know? And so the question is, which of these are, uh, you know, what, which of these are considered secondary or tertiary? You may be able to get into secondary markets, you know, but you may have to focus on tertiary markets, you know? So that's kind of why I look at the population of the towns, right? You say, okay, yeah, like I know I can definitely afford something, let's say in a town of like 15,000 people. So here is Mount Pleasant, Humble, Live Oak, West Universe, Buddha. Buddha is right, Buddha, Buddha or Buddha? I can't remember, oh my gosh, Buddha. It's too long since I live in Texas. I think it's Buddha. So Buddha, Texas or Buddha? I don't know, doesn't sound right. Anyway, so that's 15,000 people. So Where's Buddha? Uh, Buddha. Oh, wait, sorry. I was going to go back to my Google Maps here. Google Maps is here. Let's type in. Where is, oh, there it is. See, look, there's Buddha right here. Or Buddha. Buddha, Buddha. So that's a town of just like 15,000 people. So then you get all up in here, right? You're like, okay, so here's my town of 15,000 people right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to satellite view this thing. And then I'm going to start looking around. I'm going to search storage in this area. So you can see here's the storage. The public storage is down here already. So they're off the highway, though. This Down in this town here, it's like, okay, well, where's all the storage facilities? There's like no storage facilities in this area. There's only one right here, True Lock. So True Lock looks like this. Let's pick it up. And this is what it looks like. All right, so this is it. It looks like kind of a nicer facility. It's kind of smaller. It's like 100 units. It's like 100 units. So that's actually not too bad. That's the only one that is on the on Google Maps, right? So now we can get in there and like maybe we could even get in there and start looking for some other facilities. There's got to be other storage facilities here. You know what I'm saying? Like. Let's see if we can find some other storage right here. You just look around. So you could see like this one, you see how it's got like three long buildings. That's what storage looks like. I can get rid of this thing. It's annoying me, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to get rid of it. No. All right, uh, let's see, hang on. Okay, so let's get in here and see. Oh, look, look, here's something. What is this? This looks like a, it looks like an automotive place, but this right here kind of looks like a storage. This looks like, oh, no, this is a, no, that's the county fair catering sessions. But you could just drop down in there is what you could do if you can, kind of like come down. Oh, no, this doesn't allow you to drop down. But you could always just drop down and be like, oh, yeah, what is that building? Okay, let me see. No, no storage here. That's the street, but it looks like there's nothing there, right? So you can say, okay, that didn't work. Let's go over here. Let's find some more storage and let's see if we can find. I find so many storage facilities this way, honestly. I find, I, we were like driving through Texas from Georgia and I found so many, as we were driving, I found so many storage facilities just by looking right here. I'm trying to figure out like where everything is. And you kind of start like getting the hang of it once you get into it. You know, because like the thing is, is like you can see here, um, right? So when you when I when I zoomed out and I said store search storage here, there was just that one here in this area, right? So there's a Noah's Ark here and the true ark. But I can guarantee you if you satellite view you would start looking up on here, there's got to be more in this area. A town of 15,000 probably has like, a town of 15,000 probably has at least five to 10 storage facilities. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, hang on. So let me go back to my share screen. Let me go to this here. I'm going to go to this. This is the this is the spreadsheet that we just made. This is the Texas one. So I like renamed this Texas population. 
Now you see, so let's go here. And then what we do, Chris, like Chris and I have been working on this is like the ones that we're interested in, we'll make tabs for. You see like Flowery Branch is 8,000 people. And look how many storage facilities are in Flowery, Flowery Branch. And this only has 8,000 people. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, seven uh, facilities. And this is all that we've found, right? This is not like probably all of them, but this is what we've found so far. Right, so you can look through and you say, oh, Gainesville just has like this many. Dalton is 33,000, has this many. And what we do is we really kind of just keep track of each city, like Blue Ridge, Morganton here. This is the only one that we found. Statesboro, we've got like this many storage facilities that we found. Canton is kind of a bigger town and it has this many storage facilities. So the question is, like, once you start really looking at the uh, population, let's see, let's go down here. Let's go to, like, um, Sylvester has 6,000, and it's got four storage facilities in it. Byron's got 5,000, it's got four. Warner Robins has 80,000, it's got, like, this many that we found. Brunswick has 16,000. Look how many storage facilities are in Brunswick. There's like so many storage facilities up there. Man, we need to get up there. I want to buy some storage facilities in Brunswick. And uh, Fairbird has 17,000, 16,000. And that's another thing too, is like when you start really looking at the population, I mean, what you're going to do is you're going to, um, you want to do like total square footage of a town or like an area three to five mile radius or a town, right? So like say if you have a 17,000 population, you could just get all the storage facilities there because it's not a big town anyways, right? And you would do like the total square footage. So you're going to have to um, calculate the total square footage divided by the total population. And that number should be between six and eight for it to be a thumbs up deal. Does that make sense? So you're doing the total population divided by the total square footage, all right? How do you measure the total square footage of a, of a, of a town? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. Um, so what we're going to do is go back here, right? And you're going to say, okay, I'm going to try to figure out what the total population, I mean, I, the total population, you can look up the town, right? So Buda, we know is 15,000 people. Well, here's Buda, and let's see. All right, so let's say I don't know how where the the uh, the thing is, but let's say like you know you could say like okay, this town right here has got fifteen thousand people in it. So now you need to calculate the uh, actually yeah, I'm gonna scroll down. You're gonna calculate the total square footage, right? So you're gonna get in here, you can say, okay, how do I calculate the total square footage? Well, guess what? You can do that. Like either number one, you can like go to radius. Radius is a, um, you have to pay for it though. Radius plus, radius storage, I think that's what it's called. Radius storage or radius plus. Radius plus is what it's called. Now you have to pay for this and you could be like, all right, I'm gonna just type this in. Now the thing with radius is what they do is you pay for it and, um, It'll show you like it'll um, let you search all the competition in the area based on your um, address. OK, but the thing with radius, does has anybody ever use radius? The thing with radius is that it only pulls up, pulls up online data. OK, that's it. So if you're if the facility is not online, then it's not going to be included into the data. And these little tiny towns, sometimes like 15, 20, 30,000 people, Half of them don't even use a website. You know what I'm saying? So like the data is really skewed, honestly, you know? So like in a primary market, totally. A secondary market, probably totally figure out what the total square footage is within like a three to five mile radius, right? With radius, right? That's why it's called radius, right? But in these little tiny towns like tertiary market, sometimes it's really hard to figure out total population because it's not, they're not online. If you know what I'm saying, hopefully just let me know if y'all are confused. But anyways, so um, so what you're going to do is you're going to get in here to um, like right here and then you can measure this. And we this is what we do. Honestly, we measure we measure how much total square footage is It's because we want to know. Right. So you'll right click on this and you'll measure the distance. And then like you can just look at this and um, oops. That one, okay. And then you go down to this one. 
and then you go to this one, and then you go to this one. Okay, so now it just measures it as 376 feet, right? So this is 4,726 square feet. All right, so you know, obviously, it's a 5, 10, 15,000. That's pretty good. That's pretty good size, right? So this is probably more than 100 units, probably 125 to 150 units. And I'm not sure if these are included or not. But essentially, you said, okay, like this building right here, this is 15,000 square feet right here. Okay. And then you just clear this and I say you clear these measurements. Okay. And then you could say like, I'm in Buda and I can find like the three storage facilities in this area. That's all I find, right? So like, I'm gonna go over here and here's this Noah, Noah's Ark one as well too, right? I see this one, so I'm gonna get in here and measure this one as well too. We can actually just take a look at it. Oh, look at this, it's a big one right here, right? So that's like a super duper big Noah's Ark. It's like, Noah's going good here, right? And so you would just measure this as well too. You just right click and you just measure the distance from here to here. And then actually like you just need to get, oops, I missed this one. Uh-oh, clear, I screwed it up. Uh, one, measure distance. Two, distance. Well, I keep pushing the right thing here because it gets in my way. Okay, that's 20,000 square feet. All right, that's 20,000 square feet right there. So you got 20, probably another like, you know, 15,000. This is probably about 10. And this is a little bit eight. This is like eight and eight. So it's like 20, 30, you know, you got 40. And then you got maybe 50,000. This is like 50,000 square feet. This is a big ass, huge facility right here. So, you know, so that's another thing too. So you look and say, that's 50,000. The other one is 15,000. So that's already like 35,000 square feet for a town of 15,000 people, right? And you could just divide that and if the numbers between like six and eight, then you know, like, yeah, you should definitely you can buy in that area, right? But um, if it's like, if it's, if it's less than six and more than eight, then usually that's like a thumbs down, right? It's like, if it's maybe like a five, you could say like, oh yeah, well, it's like maybe a yellow light or something. Or if it's a um, nine, maybe it's a yellow light and then anything like that, it's 10. But usually people try to stay between six and eight. Now, depending on your like primary market might be a little bit different or whatever, but like tertiary market, if you're between six and eight, you're a good deal. And so you want to figure out, essentially what I'm talking about is you want to figure out what the total population and the total square footage is in the area, like the three to five mile area of your property. And you can do that manually, especially in tertiary markets, you should be doing that manually. And the reason why is because there's probably a lot of storage facilities that are not online. Once you get into secondary and primary markets, most likely you'll be able to go to like, um, you know, to Radius or some software like that. And then they could just add it. Then you could look it up and add it that way. Okay. So, so that's basically like somebody asked about population. That's how we look at it. That's how we look at population. Okay. What did you say was good number again when you divide total population? It's great. Yeah, six to eight. Six to eight. Okay. So that's basically what we're doing. So that's what I'm doing as well, too. So I'm here in the um, I'm here in the Austin, uh, Texas area right now. And, but we're over in the ups, we're up in the Lake Travis area and we're here right now about to drive for storage. And I'm a very, very hands-on person. That's just the type of mentality that I'm in. I just, I'm not like a sit there and calculate it on the store, on the, uh, the website, you know, type of person. I want to get in there and see, like I'm a grassroots bootstrap type of person. That's just how I am. Okay, I'm not a high level like person. I'm like a low level person. Okay, so um, I like to, I'm going to drive around and I'm going to look at the market and I'm going to see, I'm going to see where all the storage facilities are and I'm going to mentally like pay attention and then I'm going to try to figure out where I can put another storage facility or if I should buy some because there's just like not enough in that area like the Buda area. There's a not enough storage. If that's the only ones that you see, that is not enough storage facilities. Because I can tell you in a 15,000 population, you should be able to have like at least five storage facilities, if not more. And that's why I, I showed y'all like on the spreadsheet here, 
right? You know, like when you see a town of like 80,000 and only has, you know, you can only find 11 storage facilities, you know that there's a need in that area, right? And so we keep like in Georgia, like we keep track of every storage facility that we buy. We put it on this sheet and not buy, sorry, find. And the reason why is that we put it on the sheet because we want to just really keep track of every storage facility out there, you know, just in case, like you just, you just, and the place you start learning your numbers. I mean, really do. So this one only has a town of 16,000 people. Look how many storage facilities are. It's like a ridiculous, like 14. It's like, we've only found 11 so far in Warner Robins. We found in this one, we've had found like 14. You know what I'm saying? So when you start really looking at the population of a town and then you start looking at like what the total square footage of the town, you really start learning so much about your market and i'm going to tell you okay that like u-haul cube smart and um public storage and like whatever extra space and all these different it feels like a fly frying around like all around my face right now so if you see like a fly frying lesson but anyways okay um anyways so like they they what they do this is awesome right is they monitor migration patterns Storage facilities monitor migration patterns. And so does all of the big, the huge, big ass companies. This is what they're doing. They're trying to figure out like where should they put their next building? Walmart does this and we're in HEB, you know, and Texas, everything's HEB or whatever, you know, like all these grocery stores are like, where should we put our next building? Right. So what they have to do is they have to really watch migration patterns. They have to watch where people are moving to. They have to watch where it's, which cities are being gentrified. They look at like which populations of which cities are increasing and which ones are decreasing. This is a real estate investing 101. If you are not looking at your data, if you are not looking at the, 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 the cities that are growing versus the cities that are declining or stabilizing, then you're just not gonna get in the game. You're just not, right? And so this is what we do. We monitor the cities of Georgia to see who's growing, who's not growing, who's stabilized, or we look at what the total population is versus the total square footage. We're gonna start doing the same thing in Texas as well too, is really learning the market. All right, really learning all the areas that I wanna invest in. Which cities should I invest in? Which, which, which population, uh, which, which amounts of population are good for me? In Georgia, we are at 5,000 to 20,000. I'm sorry, we do have something like that. 5,000 to 50,000, essentially. It's kind of where we're at, but our sweet spot is like, I would say 15,000 to like 25,000 for us personally. And the reason why is because we just like to buy, like we have so much money that we can spend and then we just leverage that money in these little tiny towns, okay? Now, uh, so that's what you need to do. I think you're, the next step that you need to do to find your next facility is to really start looking at the population of the towns in your area and figuring out which, you know, how much storage is there versus what the population is. All right. And really kind of get to know your market, get to know your market. Okay. So Sean says a 5k person town size can really support five storage facilities. I mean, sorry, a 15k person. What about the number of units in size? Yeah. So that's why I said that's the, that's the formula. The secret formula is the total square footage divided by the total population of that three to five mile radius. I personally say five miles within five miles of where your storage facility is that you want to build or buy, what's the total population and what's the total square footage? Divide that and if the number's between six and eight, yes, it will support it, okay? So that's the secret formula that nobody ever tells you, okay? And so what else? Any other questions that you have about that? So like I said, I'm here driving for storage. I'm going to get out there and try to figure out where I should be building. And so now, like, let's see, we can do this now so y'all can just see. So now I'm in the, uh, this, I'm in this area here. So let's look and see, like, let's look population of Spicewood, uh, Laga Vista, Briar Cliff. Let's see, Spicewood. Uh, let's do Spicewood. 
Oh, no, the, see, the reason I like to put it in my spreadsheet, too, is because you can alphabetize. That's another reason why I put it in the spreadsheet, right? You can also just Google it, I guess, but like Texas population. And let's see. So then I go in here and then I just say, okay, let me just like put this in alphabetical order. Okay. Now we can go down. Spicewood has, oh my gosh, taking forever. How do I have to do this faster? Okay. Okay, Spicewood. Okay, Spicewood. Why is there not even a Spicewood on here? There's not even a Spicewood on here. Spicewood, like, not even a city or what? Spicewood, Texas, population. 11,375. So there's 11,375 people in this town right here, which is, this is kind of like the area that I'm really focusing on is out in the Spicewood area. I think that's like the next up and coming area of Austin. And so there's 11,000 people in this area. So let's just kind of get all up in here and let's check it out. Let's do search this area for storage. And there you go, here's some storage here. So now, so now what we're gonna do is just get in here and just click on some of these. Let's see, there's this Spicewood boat and RV storage right here. Click on this, take a look at it and see what it looks like. Looks like a dog park to me. Oh yeah, here's something. Oh, this is like a covered, okay, it's like covered parking. Here's basically what it looks like. Okay, they must have just opened or something. Well, that's kind of, we have a nice black fence and stuff. That's good. Let's see, and then like, now you look and see, here's Spicewood storage. I guess we could just open it up, take a look at it. See, most of the time, like when you find all these ones that are on Google Maps, like these are not, these are not gonna be what the ones that I buy, right? I'm gonna go drive around this area and you notice like they're all kind of off the highway right here. So the question is, are there any storage facilities like up in this area? You know, and I need to start, I need to get in there and really start looking and seeing like where are all the storage facilities like in this area? There's gotta be storage facilities around here. It's like, here's this one, it's a big one right here. And so now I'm going to get in and just really kind of look around and see if I can get all up in here and see if what's like, what is over here? I need to look and see. I really have not been over here in years. And I just, I know there's got to be storage in here somewhere. And so I'm going to just search around and just kind of see if I can find some storage. But I'm going to drive because I'm more of like a driving person. But you could also just like get up in here and just look and see. If you can find something or if not then maybe there's land i can buy here and then i can build a boat in rv storage right so i'll look here and i'll say like maybe there's some land somewhere over here if there's if i can't find any storage then i'll just build is what i'll do and so i just take some time to really just get to know the market i just take my time and just really kind of just get to know lay the land and if I end up not finding any storage facilities in that whole area, then I'll say, okay, this is a good area for us to build. Because the lender that, that the, the lender that I'm working with, they really want to build is what they want to do. They'd they buy if, they, if we find something good to buy, they'll buy, but they really want to build. So I just gotta get out there, find something for the lender, make the lender happy, right? That's what happens when you work with private lenders too as well like sometimes they're just like no i want to do this and that's it and then you just kind of have to do whatever they say right okay is there zoning and rules for land area yes yes exactly so that's what we have to do too like we have to get in there and i'll get into the uh, i'll look i mean i'll even look on the mls and just see if there's any type of um you know uh like any land for sale on the mls or zillow or something like that in that area if i end up not finding anything then if you go for like a long period of time and there's like no storage, well, then that's probably a good indication that you need some storage, right? I mean, all these little towns that we drove up at like from, um, from uh, like from Georgia, from Georgia to Atlanta, I went, through, went the back way and kind of just like went through and just checked everything out. All these little tiny towns, they all have storage in them. These little tiny towns have just like maybe a thousand, couple thousand people, they all had storage. You know, so um, there's opportunity in even the smallest areas as well, too. We're open to that. We're open to being in like any, you know, small city. 
Okay, so that's kind of that's kind of how it is. So that's basically what we're here for is to look for storage and to really kind of focus on what our next plan of attack is. Okay. Any questions on like what I do, kind of how I really map everything out for Google Maps and then how I um, I look for storage and like I'm mapping out my market. Anything else, anything that y'all could think of that y'all need help with, y'all just put it into the chat. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Anything else that y'all want to go over with before we end the session? We got a couple more minutes left. Any other questions? Done? Nothing? Okay, Nathan says, how does the actual transaction work? You put the thing under contract, like to buy it, you put it under contract and then you, you find the money to buy it and you close on it. I guess that's really it, I mean. You got to find the money, right? Yeah, you got to find the money. There's no escrow. There's no, there's no escrow. You just find the money and then you buy it. That's what you do. Are there some areas that jump out to you as great growth areas for storage or regions of the country, towns? I mean, anything, any place that if you could find a secondary or a tertiary market that's growing, that's being gentrified. Right. So that's why I said with the with the bigger companies that they're they're looking at the migration patterns. Right. Because they're they're looking into secondary markets. I mean, primary markets, you know, are oversaturated. There's too much storage. Right. So the question is now everybody has to look at secondary or tertiary markets and all the big REITs are all looking at the secondary markets. Which secondary markets do you see? Which areas do you see like, you know, public storages and U-Hauls going up in? Like, you know, I used to grow, I used to live in Peachtree City, which is a town of like 36, like 40, 40,000 people. U-Haul came in, built this huge big facility. And it's a little tiny town of just 40,000 people, but it's a suburb of Atlanta, right? So if you're seeing like REITs coming in and like can't, I live in Canton, which has 30,000 people in it, but there's like, it's cube smart public storage like this is a, considered a secondary market and you haul and everybody's all building in it right so the question is do you want to be in that area competing with all those you know big companies if you don't then you got to start looking at the tertiary markets and seeing which areas that you're in there's no i mean any place in the country is a good market unless it's like declining the, mark, the growth of the market. Now, like some people have said like West Virginia is like declining. People are moving out of West Virginia. But, um, you know, I, you know, I don't know. You just, I don't know. I mean, I would buy in West Virginia. But, um, you know, so it's really just what, what areas are declining? Are there any, Google it. Are there any declining cities, like declining cities of population, declining cities in America? All right, and I look it up, declining cities. Yeah, so Omaha, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle. These are the big, these are the biggest declining cities here. Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, Kansas, Denver. Yeah, right? so these are all the cities where like you don't want to be in Nashville, Atlanta. You could see what they're declining to. Okay. So, or you could say Google like small towns, like declining small towns of America. Declining towns of America. All right, and just see. Okay, so here's some declining towns. Arkansas, not doing too good, you know. What are the, what towns are shrinking in the United States, really? So essentially, like what I'm saying is that it's really just market research. Market research is what it is, okay? So um, you gotta just really educate yourself on the market. This is the one thing that people don't do. They just wanna like ask me questions like, who do you use to draw up the legal paperwork and what other research do you do? With this? So essentially like, this is, this, is a, this is a one hour webinar, okay? And uh, like to learn how to invest in self-storage takes more than an hour. Okay, this is not something that you can just learn in an hour and answer every question and figure it out. All right. So uh, like I said, I do a webinar every Monday. What I focus on is, is helping you at least find your, your, first, your first storage facility. 
And uh, if you really truly want to buy self storage, then you should be joining. If you're not already a part of my storage mastermind, then you should be in my coaching program. It's called Storage Nerds. And Storage Nerds is where like we meet on a regular basis and we are just coaching and master. We do masterminding. We have two day boot camps. We meet for like coaching sessions. I have office hours every Monday. We do infill training days. Like it's a coaching program. Right. So to come like every Monday to a webinar, it's going to take you quite a long time to learn how to invest in self-storage. Uh, so you really need like, you know, if you really truly want to do this, if you're like, look, I want to I want to buy some storage facilities in the next couple of, you know, in the next couple of months, I want to buy a storage facility. And, and I, I highly recommend that you look at storage at the storage. Room, OK, so let me just show you the website real, stat, real fast. So you can see. Um, uh, so here it is right now, Storage Nerds. You just go to storagenerds.com and then you can see the coaching program, which is um, which is right here. You have to you can apply to be in the, the mastermind. Talk to me. It'll be a Zoom one-on-one -on -one call where we go over your goals. And you say, look, I want to buy a storage facility. All right, this is my goals. This is where I'm located. And I'll kind of help you strategize and I'll go over the coaching program with you. So you can give that an idea. But just scroll down. When you go to Storage Nerd, scroll down here and you can see you've got the bi-weekly two-hour uh, Zoom virtual meetings. You've got the virtual two-day boot camp. Our next boot camp is on July 10th and 11th. Like that two-day boot camp, that's going to get you like rocking and rolling. Right. Like it's a whole two days of you just really learning how to do this. And then you also get access to the um, to the uh, the um, coaching, the I'm um, sorry, the uh, the super simple self storage course. Right. So here's the course under my courses um, on the website and you get access to this course. And this course essentially just takes you through step by step how to get started. All right, let me put this down here. How to get started, right? So you'll see here, like you have the jumpstart course. This is like, what do I do now? All my students watch this. It's the very first thing that they do. And then you have, and then what we do is we break down your business into modules, right? So essentially it's like how to set up the office, all the marketing that you need to be doing, acquisitions, how to run deal analysis, how to look at the numbers, how to find the money, Right, you know how to put in offers, how to do negotiations, all the creative ways that you can find you can finance your facilities, and then like management, like okay, now I bought it, what the hell do I do? Right, how do I manage this thing so it's truly passive income? Right, so this is like the free core. This is the course that comes with it, and then you just go to storagenerds.com and you'll see all the things that we offer: office hours, infill training day two-day boot camps. That's all here. The coaching program, I mean, sorry, the um, the Facebook group, how to wholesale self-storage, the infill training day, the deal analyzer. You get our deal analyzer, you just plug in the numbers and it works, right? And then this is the, the all the documents and contracts that you need. And then this right here is the account of having the accountability software, right? So when you join, you'll see like in the first 90 days, your goal is to get it under contract. And then you're onboarding it. And this is all the things that you do to onboard it. This is the everything that you automate, how, to, how you automate and systematize your first facility. And this is how you, um, you, after like, after you get through all that, you're just out looking for your next facility, right? So, you know, within the first year, like this is not something like you just go out and buy a facility in the next, like, you know, and you're like, oh yeah, now to go find another facility, right? This is like, this is like long-term buy and hold passive income building wealth, right? So we've, we've been doing this five years. We're buying our 10th facility. We have one facility in Florida under contract. We're here looking for more con more facilities. And like the first couple of years, like the first year I bought like one, the next year I bought another. And then after that, it just started to click. Like I just, it just started to click. And so now with the course, with the, with the storage nerds coaching, I see like all my students literally within the first 90 days, you know, 180 days, they're out finding facilities and putting them under the contract. And by the, by the third or fourth quarter, they're ready to buy their next, you know, next facility. So you get to speed that up because it took a long time for me to figure all that out. 
But um, but yeah, that's what the coach is. That's what the coaching program is. So like to sit here and answer all these random questions and stuff, it's just it's just too much. Like you need like a whole two day virtual boot camp to go through step by step by step on what you need. So that's the whole point of, of storage nerds. Okay, is to is to get you in front of that. So if you're interested in joining that, you just have to fill the application out, um, and you can talk to me. The coaching program is a thousand dollars a month. Okay, it's canceled anytime. There's no member. It's just a it's just a monthly membership, but it's a thousand dollars a month. So if you're interested in doing the two day boot camp, then you can join. It's a thousand dollars to come to the two day boot camp, right? And then after the two day boot camp, you know, if you're like, hey, I've had enough, then you could just cancel, right? But most of my students are in my coaching program for a year plus, right? So most of my students, all the ones that actually make it a priority. You know, they all, they don't want to leave because the reason why is that they're surrounded by people that are just like me and them, right? Like, you know, we're all storage nerds, okay? And so I already told y'all at the beginning that I'm here in Austin, Texas, and, uh, you know, we're, we're here to buy storage, but also, like, we're working and we're on vacation, you know? So we get to, we can be anywhere in the world and run our storage facilities, and, uh, you know, so this is kind of, this is the purpose, right? If you're going to get into storage, make it passive, make it passive. Don't be a facility that I buy. I buy the people, the ones that the people just gets up every single day and then they go and like manage their facility and they're there at their job every day working, right? We're like, we've made our facilities so passive that we could just be anywhere we want, just manage them. So that's true passive income. Okay. So again, you could just you could just click the button apply, or if you have any questions at all, you can always email me. My email is stacy at stacyrosetti.com, right? Um, and uh, and I'm here to you know to at least help you and guide you. Let's see, but I'm not going to sit here and answer all these random questions because that's like that's like a two day boot camp is what that is. Okay, and Dara says, uh, let's see, yeah. That's what I said, set up a time with me and then just like, you know, like, you know, I can always help you get started. And dear, I see you're writing me. Just you can, sometimes it's just good to just talk to me, you know, and just see kind of like what you should be doing, what you should be focusing on. It's hard to kind of figure it all out. That's why I have the, 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 uh, the sessions where you could just set up a call with me if you want. Okay. But um, I'm here, like I said, I'm here for y'all and I'll be back next Monday. So if you're, if you're just ready, I'll be here next Monday. We'll do another little session like this as well too. But I focus mostly on Monday nights. It's finding your first facility. So I'm not going to get in a lot to like deal analysis or, uh, you know, running facilities and stuff like that. That's stuff that we focus on in the coaching program. Okay. All right. So uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you for hanging out with me. And uh, I will see you guys at the next coaching uh, at the next coaching coaching session. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye.